Alrighty guys, how's it going today? So, uh, it's, uh, <clears throat> quarter, well, not too early in the morning. I think it's only about 10.30 in the morning. Leaves are still, are starting to fall. Still giving her, though. Still giving her. I just, uh, I covered my flowers just a little bit ago. I've been covering them up the last few nights because it's been pretty cold. Um, but I think tonight they're talking, um, like, you know, the low will only be like 50, so I don't think I'll cover them tonight, but, you know, the last couple nights it's been like 30-something out, you know, and pretty, 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 yeah, pretty, 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 pretty cold. So, I'm not really gonna, uh, they don't need to be dying yet because it's not quite time yet. I'm mean, still not a good month and a half, of, you know, decent weather yet, so they should still grow yet, but, um, been doing some more, some more work in the gardens and stuff. Uh, we picked all our corn, <clears throat> but our corn, I don't think was quite done yet. Some of it didn't even look like it was done yet, so. But then my grandma thought that they were, and I didn't think they were, and I was like, well, the hell is it then, you know. If she thinks they're fucking done, we'll pick them. We got, I got three cobs of corn out of that, and my grandma got three, too. She wanted... Um, the white corn, and I wanted just the regular yellow corn. So, the regular corn, you know. Oh, the hell that is. I've never seen that pickup before. So the corn's done. We got that out. Monday, we're going to start with the with the potatoes. Get them out. Because I think some of them are just about done. And the tomatoes, I don't think they're going to get done at all. Um... Some of them start turning, you know, orange or red, well, orange red, and then it just seems like they poof, just fall off it and they rot on the ground. They're like, really? So, I don't know. I don't know what help if maybe they were actually maybe on a on a thingy where they could climb. Because see, we just let ours just kind of wander. I don't know. If that's really the best thing. I mean, I guess you could do it that way too. But they they say it's better to just uh, you know let them. I guess climb a thing or something, you know. So, but whatever. It was kind of, I was alright last year, but this year, I don't know, we're having so much problems with our damn gardens. Um, our squashers and everything on the north garden, they're, some are getting normal size. Uh, well, not even normal size. They're still kind of small, but they're getting bigger now. And then we got some that just ain't doing shit. So, I think once we get the potatoes out, we're going to take the squash out. I'm just going to, we're going to pick what we can, and then we're just going to mow the rest of it under. Because the stuff is just all over the fucking place. There's no way in hell I'm going to stand there and pick all that crap up. You know, fuck that. Let's try, let's try it with the tractor and be done with it. And of course we didn't get any watermelons this year because the watermelon got wiped out. So that was kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of stupid. So, but uh, too, too much, too much, uh, too much damn rain. So, that's kind of frustrating, but whatever. So anyways, I got my Northern Tool order here. I didn't order anything super big. Um, there's going to be a couple things here in this video that I want to talk about. Um, first, I'll show you what I did get. <coughs> um, I actually got these here uh, live animal trap thingies. Um, there's actually two of them in there. There's a smaller one inside. Let's see. So... Bought these from Norton Tool. They were 40 bucks for two. And of course shipping was like ten dollars, so it was nuts, but well no, actually it was like 13 bucks. So I'm gonna take that little one out. Show you guys how small that little one is. And uh, I really like how this my grandma's got some of these too, but they're um they're newer things here now. You can't even see the paper tails in the damn way, but this actually got like a little hole in it, and you actually put that inside the thing. When the other one, my grandma's, you had to put it on top. It was very, very freaking touchy. And they said too, depending on what size animal you think you're going to try to catch, you got to set this to whatever. So I'm going to probably put it about halfway, you know. But, uh, so far, I'm liking them. I trapped it, or I, not, well, I studied it last night just for the fun of it. 
And it was actually very, very easy, surprisingly. And the small ones, the thing's not even on it, it fell off, so I gotta put it on. But this is this is the large one and this is the small one, I guess for like little, you know, like rats and stuff. Um show you here. Yeah, that's the small one. A little too small for you know for like cats or anything, so I think I'm gonna end up using this big guy. Um I'm going to uh, attempt to try to catch some of those uh, damn stray cats that keep wandering around here because I'm sick of it. You know, there's just for one, there's just too damn many of them, and <clears throat> and uh, they're fighting with my cats, and I don't want that going on. So there's only two. Well, that really, there's only one cat I got to catch, and that's that orange and white cat. So I'm going to catch him. I'm going to take him out in the middle of nowhere, and he can defend himself out there instead of fighting with my cats, you know. He's a male, so he's obviously going to try to <clears throat> claim his spot, you know. He's going to say, well, it's, this is my yard, you know. And this is this is not his yard. This is my yard. My cats are going to get the roll mine, not him. So he's going to go. That other cat, her name is Callie. We just named her Callie for short of, like, California or whatever. I don't know, but... I think we're going to probably just keep her, but we're not really going to keep her. We're just going to let her roam like she does. Because she's not a big troublemaker. <clears throat> and then Minnie, the other girl cat, she's out front right now at my place. Uh, we've been letting her kind of go too, but I got a feeling she's going to probably get knocked up again. <laughs> so, but we're thinking of maybe, we're, well, she's going to want to come in for the winter, so we're going to probably get her fixed and then we're going to keep her. So, but... So that's what that's what the game plan is with these with this one big cage. Anyway, the little one, I'm probably just gonna store that. If we start getting like you know mice problems, then we'll use the little guy. But for now, we'll use the big guy. Um, so they put this thing this thing on kind of kind of stupid. They put it on that notch, so it's not perfectly uh, perfectly straight. But whatever, I could probably fix that myself. Oh yeah, oh yeah, look at that. Well, that was easier than said and done. Okay, never mind then. But uh, this one's the same thing, I think. I gotta fix that one. Um, and then see this little rod right here. There's a little rod right here for the big guy. Okay, well, the one for this little guy fell off. So it's inside there. You can see it's sitting in there. I gotta put it on. Uh, try to figure out how to put it on because I don't see a see a latch, a latch do here. So I might have to try to bend this over. I think it's welded though, I'm not sure, but, <clears throat> or I'm just going to have to make my own. Um, I'll see how, if I can show you how, how to use these. Um, I got these at Northern Tool. Uh, they had um, some other sizes and stuff too, but I figured this would be good enough. Uh, I guess you, you push this up, you push this metal rod thing here back. Oops, can't, do it, well, can't really do it one-handed, but then you pull it up, <clears throat> like so, and then you see this little metal rod here. This has to go underneath the door, so right now it's kind of kind of above the door. Ah, come on here. So I'm going to put this behind the door here quick. Okay, something like that. Something like that, and then you have to get those two lined it up. See? See that little metal rod going down? Well, that's got to that's got to got to go on inside that one that's turning right now. It's got to go inside that, and that's what sets it. So very simple, very easy. Um, my gr my grandma's cage or live trap cage. This is a, a gravity flow one. So when they step on the plate, they they trip it. See, there's the plate. You got to put the bait in the back, and then. And then they, they, they walk on that plate, and then it trips it, and then it slams down, and then they can't get out. So, but my grandma has um, a couple of these, and they're kind of a stupid design. I mean, they're the same as this. It's got the same door and everything, but their their latch or their um, breakaway system thing here, they're, they're just stupid. You actually got to rest it on top. Very, very sensitive that way. This way, it's a, it's, it's a little less sensitive, but yet you still got to be careful with it. Because if this door comes out on your finger, you can kiss your finger goodbye. 
Well, not really, but it would fucking hurt, because it's already happened to me a couple of times. So, and then the same thing with the, with the, with, with the little guy, too, it's the same way. So, so, not bad little cages, you know, I got these, like I said, I got these on Northern Tool, and, and, uh, I don't think they're very cheap at all. I think they're, they're, uh, made quite well. I don't know if, if you know, I don't know if they would last. They should. I mean, it's all metal, so it should. But I don't think they're going to rust or anything. It looks like they're rusting, isn't it? But that's just the paint they put on it. So, so I'm gonna put the little guy back inside the big guy. There we go. So that's it on that. I don't know what this little, this little thing does. I guess it's just a little lock. I don't know. But, uh, uh oh. Oh, that is why the key is over the back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and this is, this is the lock right here. So if they try to push this door back out, which is that's what they're going to try to do, they can't. They just can stop it. I'll show you how that kind of works, too. Um. When they when they slam the door down, see then that thing gets in the way. See, and the only way you can get it out or unlock it is by you know pulling up on the tab. So it's pretty simple, nothing too major to figure out. I'm not too crazy for these things poking out. I guess I could take the grinder to and grind them down, but because you know you're gonna always <laughs> yourself with them. If I cut myself even once with those, I'm gonna grind them off. Uh, I think I don't know if the little one had the same thing or not. <sighs> yep, it does. So we'll have to, you know, I guess grind it, grind them, grind them off, and then just prime them or something. I don't know. So that's what I got. I do have the Northern Tool Book here too. I'm going to show you guys something. Um, get you guys' opinion on something. But let me get these cages out of the way. I will put the link below <clears throat> to this. So if any of you guys want to buy some, if you guys have problems with animals. <clears throat> I think it was 40 bucks for this and then like $13 for shipping. So I got it within like four days. So, you know, I mean, shipping's a lot. But, you know, I want my stuff kind of like right away. So, whatever. I'm, I'm kind of willing to pay for it. As long as it's not... I think this is, this is made in China, I believe. But, you know, I would never really be able to tell it was made in China because it's all steel. So, to me, this is just, this would just be made in America because it's all steel. They don't use any plastic bits. So, that's what I like. I like all steel things, you know, steel on steel, you know. I don't need plastic on steel, you know. You burn right through the plastic, if, you know. So, pfft. Stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. So, let me see if I can find in this Northern Tool book um, what I was thinking of buying. Um, cheap. Not super a lot, but it's, you know, once you got to get all the... the uh, all the safety stuff too, right? You need to, uh, uh, you know, you, you got to get all the safety stuff, right? So, I'll tell you here what I was thinking of buying. Uh, probably be a future deal, not anytime soon, maybe next year. If you guys say it's okay. Uh, whatever I did with it. Should have bookmarked it, I guess, but I don't really bother with that. But I should have. So, let me find it here quick. Oh, here we are. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think. Yeah. Okay, well. You guys know, I know some of you guys were suggesting to repaint this trailer. This yellow trailer here, or red trailer, or blue trailer, or whatever the hell you want it to be. Um, well, I could take the grinder to it, but I mean, that's kind of a lot of grinding, you know, to grind all this paint off. Um, and I am going to make these safety chains longer. They do need, they do need to be longer to, um, you know, for big red. Um, so, I was wondering what you guys thought of sandblasters. And I am going to look at one here soon. 
Because I would obviously have to sandblast it outside. And I think all you need to run that thing is obviously is your air compressor. So, um, because I really, the only thing that has to get sandblasted is the rims, the frame, the axle, and the hitch. That's about all. I don't really need to, uh, that's about, that's all there is to this trailer. I mean, it's not a lot to sandblast, right? Um, I think I would, I don't know. I don't really want to take this thing apart because then I'm going to probably, probably end up forgetting how to put it back together. But I'll probably have to. I'll probably work on taking the hitch off, repainting the hitch. And then I'll work, just kind of work my way up, right? So, I was thinking of maybe getting a cheap sandblaster. They do have two different, well, they have many different sizes. I mean, from from tiny little guys to big, huge monster guys. Like, I don't need a super huge son of a, son of a bitch. And how much sandblasting would I really do, right? You know, I mean, this would probably be... Once, once, once in a blue moon. So, but the ones I was looking at kind of got, well, the one I was looking at got, definitely got crappy uh, reviews, but there was one that got a little bit better. Um, this is from Northern Tool. And uh, I, was, I just want to get your guys' opinion, opinion on it because, because you, you know, you just can't really, just can't, you know, paint over this. The paint, the old paint would start to crack and then push up on the new paint, and then it would break the new paint. So you gotta have to print with a strip it right down to the to the you know steel. And the axle's gonna have to get the same thing because it's starting to rust. So, so what I was thinking, like I said, I was thinking about getting a sand blaster. Um, now I'll, I'll, I'm gonna put the link to the one below. But the one that's see, they only have a picture of one, and that's the smallest one they got. Um, but there's one that's a little bit bigger and it actually has wheels. I don't really need, I mean, it's, it's bigger, so I'll show you here, but. See, this is what I was thinking to get right here. It's this little sand blaster dewey, but it's bigger though. See, uh, 90 pounds it'll hold. It's got six inch wheels, 10 foot hose, 19 pounds, 90 bucks. Um, because this one right here is the 50 pound. It holds 50 pounds of sand, 7 foot hose, weighs 10 pounds, 70 bucks. But I'm going to put the one to the 90 pounder because that one's a little bit bigger. I looked at the 50 pounder and I don't know, because they, they obviously do have videos. But I just don't know if 50 pounds would be enough. You know, and they do have sand here, you know, to use and extra hoses. And see, they see, then here they got bigger ones, right? But look at the price, 500 bucks. You know, maybe in the future, and here I'll have to, we'll have to get, I know that with the 50 pound um, sand blaster, you get a free hood, shield kind of thing. Uh, probably just end up getting it, because see, when you get the bigger one, you don't get that, so I'll have to end up getting this. Uh, I don't know really this one I would get. Probably just, uh, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. So, but uh, yeah, you're gonna. Of course, you're gonna need. I don't think I need that crap. I mean, that's ex extreme. You know, sandblasting. And plus, I'll be doing most of mine outdoors. So, what do you really need protection? I mean, a face shield is what you're definitely gonna need. Uh, gloves. I don't know. We are gonna need a screen dewy too to screen it out. But. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, the filter thingy. So, I mean, here's a stand that I guess you can get for them. So, I mean, here's, here's, here's bigger ones, you know. But, you know, 2,000 bucks, that's just, you know, that's just nuts. Um, so, I've just been kind of looking around and I thought, well, instead of grinding it, you know, you think uh, <clears throat> sandblasting would be a little better. Um. You know, I was just going to get this to ALC, but in the the 90 pound um, sand blaster thing, right? Because I think, well, the 50 pounder is only so yay tall, and then the other one's taller, so, you know, obviously it holds more. But, you know, like I said, they both kind of got crappy reviews, but some were good, and some were most, more, most were kind of bad, but just, like, I suppose, because they, I think because they kind of lacked power. 
But if you're going to do extreme sandblasting, like, all day long, you would obviously need a big, you know, a big son of a bitch. See, I'm just going to probably just end up doing this trailer, and then it'll probably be the end of it for a while. Until I get the other frame in, the other trailer in. But that needs to be completely overhauled. Um, that's a big job. So, I think I'm just going to work on this little trailer. And, uh, just, I mean, all I'm, all I'm going to end up doing to is just you know, repainting it pretty much, so it doesn't, you know, continue to rot out on me, um, because the rims are definitely going to need a, need a sandblasting, you know, they're, they're the most rustiest, and I did try to put some paint on them, but obviously that was many years ago, and the paint's already starting to fall off, so it needs to be cleaned up, repainted, and probably, like I said, I'm just going to, you know, just paint it black, it ain't going to matter, so, um, I can get the paint and the spray cans at the hardware, I don't know, that's, that's kind of like, cheap paint crap but you know I don't really have money for a paint sprayer either I don't even know if, well they should sell paint sprayers I think but um I don't know if Norton Tool does or not but you know that's just you know I don't really know if that's necessary so plus who knows where it's at right you know I don't think Norton Tool even does sell that kind of stuff I guess if they did, that'd be cool, but, you know, I think just those cans of spray paint would be good enough, you know. I can stock up through it, you know, on it throughout the winter, get a can here and there, and then, you know, by then, you know, I'll have enough paint to paint this thing. So, but I'm not going to do anything with this trailer this year. Um, once the flowers die off, I'll have a, plenty of tarps, so I'm going to put the... Um, put this trailer back outside. It'll just put I'll put it next to the car, and then I'll just cover it up with the tarps, just so that way the snow won't sit on it and get it all wet and rot it out even quicker. But it's definitely putting a number on the frame over there. Um, I think it's just mostly dirty. Uh, you probably have to uh, power wash it, or well, I don't have even have a power washer, so I'll probably have to. Uh, scrub it, paint, wash it with the hose, and scrub it down to get some of that grime and crap off it, you know, and then just sandblast it from there. Uh, I think I, what I would do, because it, it's all bolted pretty much, so I think what I would do is I'll take the hitch out first, prime, or, you know, sandblast it, paint it, and then take these side deweys off, because it, it's all bolted. Yeah, and then do those, and then put those kind of like back together, but it won't be hooked here, obviously. And then take this front piece out, blast that, put it back in, or somewhat back on anyway, and then just probably take this cross beam out, redo that, redo the back piece, and then do the side pieces later on, because, because see, obviously the axles are kind of, I guess, are bolted to it. So... And I want to print well keep this thing intact throughout the time I'm doing it. So when you take one piece off, like that piece, the axle's gonna to have to obviously go back on because I don't want to do the axle yet. I want to do that last, I guess. So and then do this side. And once the frame's put back together, then I'll drop the axle and do the axle. But the axle, uh, I don't think I have to do the, the springs because they look fine. They're not even rusty. Surprisingly, they're doing pretty very well. Yeah, I probably won't even I might sandblast the the brackets, but it, they, you know, everything else seems fine, right? And then once that's done, um, we'll do the axle, like I said, and then we'll pop the wheels off and we'll do the rims. I don't think I gotta take the rubber off though. Let me know if I have to for sandblasting. I don't think it would hurt. I mean, I could probably, you know, put some plastic over or something to kind of help. But both sides are gonna obviously have to get primed or primed, sandblasted. Well, yeah, they're gonna have to get primed for painting, but sandblasting a wide, I think that'd be all right. Um, uh, these brackets here for the springs, they look fine, so I'm not going to bother with them. I will just prime them and paint them. Um, it should be fine, I think. And that's about it. I'm sure it's done. It won't rot then for a while. Tires are still holding air, surprisingly, so I don't need to buy a new rubber. You know, the rubber the tires are still good. Once they start to leak, well, if they start to leak, I'll just put slime in them. 
Um, and then that'll take care of that, right? So, guys, you might as well get max life out of these tires. There's not really much for cracking on the tires, so, on the, on the walls, right? They still look like they're brand new, like it hasn't really been used. So, the chains, the safety chains, are going to have to get stretched or get longer. Um, not quite sure where I could buy extra chain from. I guess you could just buy a chain that size and then you just cut it up yourself. I mean, I could take the grinder to it. That would cut it up, no, no problem. So, yeah. So let me, let me know what you guys think of that sandblaster. I'll put the link, I'll I'll put the link to it below and to the... I guess to the cages if you guys want to see them, you know, get some more information on them. In case you want some. You can just get them, I guess, like, like one size. You know, I mean, I got two. Kind of two for the price of one kind of thing, but yeah, it's still a lot. You know, you know, it was like 40 bucks and then like 13 for shipping, so it's quite a bit. But, you know, whatever. Kind of, kind of needed them, so... But I'm going to put this big one to use today. I, I do have some of my own cats out. So I know they're going to end up getting trapped in the son of a bitch. But then I'll just put them in the house. And they'll be out of the way. So. But yeah. So let me know what you guys think of the, of the sand blaster. Um, I know Bill T-Max got a new one. He got a bigger one. But his is like a. His is like a. Um. Like you can put parts in it. You know. It's like a standing one. You know, this is just, uh, well, that's just, that's just for small parts, right? You know, this is for more for, like, obviously, like, outdoor kind of use, kind of, you know, bigger jobs kind of thing. So, I mean, I guess that's the sand you get, 20-pound pail of blast of blast, whatever, 40 bucks for a pail. So, I'll put the links to that. I guess, and I guess to that pail of crap, so let me know if that's the right stuff I think, or stuff or not. I think it is. Um, and then I'll put the link to the cages, or the traps, if you guys want to look at them too. But that's my future plan. Um, I'm probably, like I said, I'm not going to get the, uh, the thing yet, because I'm still working on stuff for the welder. And I want to... It's kind of hoping to weld this summer, but or just fall at least anyway. But I don't know what's going to happen because I'm looking at stuff I need, and I need about two hundred two hundred dollars worth of crap just so I can even get to welding this year. And so I'm kind of hoping something maybe on eBay will sell, so I can at least get a little bit there there. And uh, I don't know, it's not really going too well right there right now, but whatever. Because I was kind of hoping to weld this year. I was kind of hoping to break my welder in. But, uh, I don't think that's going to happen. So if it don't happen, then I'll probably just, you know, get the blaster thing, I guess, and maybe just save it. I don't know. I might just end up getting some things for the welder. So. So, yeah. I guess just let me know what you guys think of that. Um, if you guys think it's any good. I mean, for... This kind of small stuff, you don't really need a big blaster, you know, or sand blaster or anything like that. I think that's what that is. I mean, they, you know, have it called something else. But, you know, it's to remove paint and rust, so that's kind of what I need to do. So, let me know if you guys think that's a good idea for this trailer. Because sitting there with the grinder would be for, like, ever. And it would be annoying because that grinder is so damn loud. I mean, this thing's quieter, so, and they do recommend, uh, they recommend kind of like a big air compressor, but I think mine could do it, 7 CFMs at 80 PSI, well, I've been at like 90 PSI because the, the impact gun requires 90 PSI, so I think I have more than the power, so, I'm thinking about getting the 90 pound, it looks kind of like this, but it's got wheels on it, and it's got a longer hose, it's 10 feet. So, I might even just, um, get creative here. And, uh, swap some of this hosing stuff out, because I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the sandblaster in the corner. 
so I can blast outside, not have to, you know, blast in here, right? So I was thinking of doing is maybe I'm going to get that hose with the three couplers on it. It's got three of these on there. Um, and maybe I'll just trying to figure out what I want to do. I could hook it onto this, but then I got three couplers that are getting in the way, right? So, uh, if I don't know what I'll do, I guess I could just make it so I can just plug it in there, like I do with this one, and then just put the couplers here, and then I'm going to actually just run the hoses, or the hose, uh, up in there. Just route it right down to the thing, and then I think that's all you gotta do. I think, or what do you, what do, you do? Can't remember. No, maybe you don't. Uh, no, I think actually. No, I think actually you you plug it right into the gun. So actually, yeah, you don't need to do that. I can just plug it right in, right into that. I guess I kind of forgot about that. This is 50 feet of hose. So yeah, I guess that would work. Yeah. Because I guess you plug the gun right into your hoses, and then there you go. So yeah, I guess I, w I guess I would be okay then. Kind of forgot about that problem. Um, it, it needs the same size hose, so that's what I got, I guess. You guys can figure it out. I'll put the link below, but I'm pretty sure that's the way it goes. Um, yeah, so I'll just put the sandblaster there in the corner, kind of like where that big disc is there, that cutting disc, or the blade, I mean. And then that's it. I'll probably put it up on blocks because it gets wet there and I don't want the thing sitting in water. So I'm going to get some, uh, I could use wood, but the wood will just absorb it, so that's not good. So I'll have to get some blocks of concrete and then uh, shove it in there. That's where I'll put it. I'll put it there. I still want to get a hydraulic press, but I think I'm going to put that maybe right here because over there I might want to put the uh, wood stove thing. And I was going to get the electric heater, but uh, I don't think that's going to work either. Um, the one I was, I did make a video on it, but I figured the hell with it. Um, just because I don't think it's going to do me any good. Because Plus, I would have to run another line out here because, yeah, see this thing here. This is, this is what I was going to get. I'll put the link to that too. But you need, I think, just over 12 amps to run this thing. And, uh... I don't think it'll do much. It's 5200 watts or 5200 BTUs. Um, so I'd have to run another heat or another cord out here. And then I think I'm just going to probably end up getting the 15 amp so I have more power. Um, then I'll probably just end up putting the maybe the heater either up there or somewhere. But see, I don't know if 5200 BTUs would be enough to heat this shop, you know. I mean, it's a fairly big shop. It doesn't exactly say 1500 watts. I hope it doesn't really say on what how big it'll do. So, I gotta loosen that cord out, too. I'm getting that cord rubbing farting sound again. It's super windy out. I gotta put a little bit of, a little bit of slack into that line again. So, I don't know what you guys think about this heater. I'll put the link to that too, but I don't know if it'll be big enough. And plus, I'm going to have to run another damn line on here because I can't run it on off this thing because I'm already taking so much power for lights. And then plus with the air compressor running on top of that, it ain't going to work, right? Because um, if that heater would actually get it nice and warm in here during the winter, I probably could almost sandblast in the winter time, but that's not really going to be an option. It'll probably be sandblasting gets off of dusty and stuff too, right? So it's probably for the best that you don't do it. In the shop, I mean, you have to have the door up, but you know, then what's the point of having the heater on? It'll just all right out the door, so but whatever. I do have an I do have an extra cord, but it's only 13 amps, like this one. So I'll have to upgrade to the 15 amp cord just so I have enough power to make sure that I can run that. So yeah, let me know what you guys think, and uh, if you guys think the heater thing will work let me know i'll buy it it's only like 45 bucks when it's on sale originally it's like 50 so i'll put the links to all the crap below um for the uh for the cage the fan blaster and the heater let me know um if you 
you guys think that'll work or not. Because I mean, it would be nice to have heat in here, but I don't think that heater will do too much good. I mean, if you insulate the walls, it would help, but, you know, that, that might be a next year project. Um, I did foam up some of the holes down here. I foamed up, I got a can of foam, but the thing stupid again, so. I foamed all that up, I foamed up that hole. Uh, I foamed a little bit of cracks and stuff up and up outside. I, I'm going to end up getting another can again because... Um, see, there's a little bit of foam coming out of there. Well, there's, see, there's holes in the damn wood there. I don't know what the hell they're proving, but, you know, doing by that, doing that. So I'm going to foam them up. But, uh, the straw, like, I wasn't even, like, I, I, I didn't even need this whole can. Like, there's still a little bit left. But the straw thing got all hard, and, of course, you can't do anything with it. So, I gotta buy another whole fucking big can. I mean, if they, I don't know if they give you smaller stuff or not, but... I mean, it's stupid. I wasted half that, you know, it's probably almost empty, but there's still quite a bit left yet. Um, so, you know, it's kind of a waste, but I guess, I guess what, what can you do, right? Because I didn't really exactly need all that. I mean, I, well, I still do, but I can't get it out because the straw went hard on me, so. And I don't know, I, I, don't, I don't think you can just buy new straws for them, so you gotta buy a whole new freaking can, too. Stupidest thing ever, but whatever. That can of shit's cheap anyway, so I'm not going to really worry about it. So, yeah, I'm going to keep this video short. So let me know what you guys think of this heater. And, uh, of course, I don't think I'll be able to buy that either because the 15 amp cords are like 70 bucks. It's freaking insane. Um, and then, uh, the sandblaster thing, the 90 pound one, I want to get the biggest one possible because I know it's... The 50 pound may not be enough. Um, so I don't really know, but where the hell it went. I think I'm in the fuel lubrication section here. I wonder if I can find nothing. But uh, yeah, you know what it looks like anyway. The links will, the links will be uh, be below. So if it, yeah, see, I'm going to get the 90 pound one. And. Uh, yeah. So there you go. So let me know what you guys think. I'll, like I said, I'll put the links to everything below. Um, it'll be a little while before I actually upload this video because I got some other ones coming up. So I'm going to get them out of the way. So, yeah. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, there's a guy walking on the street. Interestingly, this car died. What? Whoa. I don't know. Quite weird. Quite weird. Maybe he's drunk. Well, he's not really walking tipsy, so he's probably fine, but... I don't know. Yeah, so anyway, guys, I'm going to take off. So I guess uh have a good day and stuff and stuff. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, tubes. See you guys later.